You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. One of my favorite people, Dave Heakey, in the building right now. Dave, uh, hopping back on here. Appreciate your time, my man. Oh, you bet. It's good to be with you, Mike. I always enjoy it. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's get down to let's get down to business a little bit. Uh, Arizona basketball. I think people thought that everyone's in on Tommy Lloyd. I think some people are like, "Well, we'll never lose a game here." Arizona does lose a game right here, so you know. Won't probably be at number three, but it'll be in the top 10. But uh, what was it like going into Poly, though, when you got – because I know you were there. Arizona's number three. UCLA is number seven. That had to be – that's what the conference needs. That's the kind of stuff that Arizona needs too, Dave. Oh, hey, no doubt. I think it's uh, it was a great night for Pac-12 basketball, for our conference, um, for two, you know, obviously marquee elite-level programs – uh, to go into a top 10 matchup, you know, in a good environment, it, you know, again, it, it's the right feel. It's what you want around our program. You know, when, when, uh, when Arizona rolls in, you know, it's the big time. And it was a great atmosphere. Um, you know, unfortunately it didn't, didn't go in our, our direction, but uh, it was a good step, I think, for our program to, uh, to see it, uh, to feel it. Uh, we, we, you know, I said, Tommy and I talked quite a bit, you know, maybe we just need a, just a little bit more seasoning to a degree. Um, and, but if you think about it, um, boy, you're, you're sitting in that ball game. We were at the eight minute mark, a little under eight minutes, and you're only down eight for right. a quarter of shot. Um, and give a lot of credit to UCLA. They did some really nice things. Um, and that's a team, remember, that was a shot away from moving on and beating Gonzaga last right. year in the right. tournament. Uh, in, in what was a classic game of, of NCAA tournament history. So um, good one good one for our program, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them again uh, next week when they come back to, to McHale. Dave, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. This is a team with a margin for error that's insane. Like you just said, think about it. You know, Azulis Tabellas didn't play the previous game. Arizona's not shooting well. You're playing one of the handful of best teams in the country, and the Cats are down, like you said, eight at the under eight-minute timeout. Now – I asked you this uh, last time, but I wanted to ask you this again because a couple people, uh, a couple people asked, and I think it's a fair question. Tommy Lloyd, has this gone even smoother than you thought? Oh, I don't know if. Uh, it, look, it, we knew Tommy was going to be an outstanding coach. I, mm-hmm. I thought he had all the ingredients to be perfect here right. at Arizona, um, as perfect as you can be. Um, you know, these are really challenging environments and challenging jobs, but Tommy and his staff have done an incredible job. The way our team has um, embraced the new system, embraced mm-hmm. the way we, that Tommy wants us to play. I think we picked it up obviously really quickly, which has been helpful. Um, and then to have the success, you know, to see the results have been, uh, it's been a lot of fun to see that. I know our team has enjoyed it and I'm happy for our fans. I'm happy for, I'm happy the fact that, Again, that Arizona basketball is respected as the elite level brand that it is. It's a big time national caliber program. That's where it needs to be. And um, Tommy has done a wonderful job putting the pieces together. A lot more to work. You know, this right. thing is a daily process. Right. Um, you, you know, you, there's some ebbs and flows, but uh, really, really happy with what Tommy's done. Can you take us through just a little bit? Because it, I think the thing that makes the Lloyd hire so unique is that generally at, a, at established programs, you know, a UCLA, I mean, heck, even Arizona back in the day, you're hiring coaches that have already been head coaches or at, you know, at some level. Tommy Lloyd obviously is the right hand man at arguably the best program in the country, but he didn't have like coaching experience, head coaching experience. Take us through just a little bit without, obviously you don't have to get us into anything you don't want to, but take us through a little bit of the process when you were looking at coaches, when you were looking at a Tommy Lloyd and how did he come to the forefront? Well, again, we needed, as we do, I do, we do, when we kind of step back and look at the programs, you've got to evaluate where you are. What are the pieces that you need to replace? What, what's kind of going right? What do you need to correct? You know, who, what is the skill set, the, the key elements that someone has to have to help move your program in the direction that you think it should go? Um, so you, you, you obviously take stock. Yeah, there's no question. You know, a lot of people would have walked to Tucson to take yeah. this. A lot of head coaches. Right. Um, you know, and you hear lots of crazy things in, in out there that's, that's reported, uh, people that might be interested or why don't you go after that person? Certainly there's a lot of background conversations going on trying to determine interest levels, true interest levels, not interest right. levels that help someone else 
leverage their position where they are, but really somebody that wants to come in and embrace our program and be a big part of it. You know, um, and, and yes, you, you evaluate a head coach who's been through a lot of the grind, has been through a lot of the, you know, established themselves as a head coach, seen the things that come at them because it's much different being a head coach leading a program let alone leading a program that's a top shelf like Arizona and all of the demands that come around that, not just locally, but nationally, uh, you know, for, for the game of basketball, uh, media um, requests, just, just everything you've got to do to manage your program. So it's a big, tall order. So you, you do look at obviously head coaches. Now you also have to look at who are the, you know, the really good, you have to look at the good basketball. Yeah. People. And when we started talking to people, and when I had conversations with people, it was, you know, it was, well, who are the lead assistants out there? And that, that narrowed really quickly that, mm-hmm. well, yeah, but who is that lead assistant that has the skills that, that could be your head coach at an elite level program, not go cut their teeth th- somewhere and then be ready for it somewhere else at, at a high level program. And Tommy's name kept coming up. So obviously we zeroed in real quickly to talk more and more with him and why not? You know, he sat there, watched that Gonzaga program contributed to its growth who really, when you, when you think about it, what they did was they said, we want to be like Arizona. Okay. Right. They want to be the best team in the West. And they really looked at Arizona and said, and then they did a great job. They came right up there and sat next to us, I think, and, uh, and showed that they knew what they were doing and, and built a program. And so a lot of those ingredients started to really center around why we wanted to have more conversations with Tom. And, uh, and then when you, when you see him, I mean, he, he's, He's been watching one of the best head coaches in Mark Few manager program. He right. has keenly been aware of what it takes. And again, it's well known that he was also the next person. If Mark right. decided to leave, he was going to be the guy that was going to step in. So he had been preparing to be the head coach at a high level, high visibility program. Is he as cool behind the scenes as he is in the public eye? Hey, he's great. You know, he has a, a great demeanor and a good person to be around, very comfortable. Um, you know, I call him a grounded, uh, maybe low key to a certain degree, but but boy, he can light the fire when he needs to. The intensity comes up really quickly. Um, but he's a he's a regular person and uh, he's a regular guy to be around. Very comfortable, really good conversationalist, and uh, people enjoy him a lot. I know I enjoy my interactions with him. It, it's it's fun to be around. Before we move on to Jed Fish, I wanted to ask uh, one more question. I thought this was an interesting point Don McLean made the other night where he was talking about uh, Arizona basketball. And he said, obviously, he said, Coach Miller did a lot of really good things. He said, but with Tommy Lloyd, he said, they're doing really good things, but it's very reminiscent of Lute in that how they get out and play. He said, when you think of Arizona basketball under Lute, you think of running and gunning, getting up and down the court. Was that when you were looking at Tommy Lloyd, was that, was that, I would assume that was an attractive, attractive quality to him. Absolutely. I mean, again, the style of play, when you watch Gonzaga play, mm-hmm. you know, right. you go, wow, man, those guys get up and down the court. Wow. They, you know, it's just as a fun um, and a very productive style of play. You go, Hey, this mm-hmm. is fun to watch. And they're also score a ton of points. And so, yeah, I think, I remember, you know, I've been in the league a long time, had my chance at another institution in the, to be watching Arizona. And I mean, every night you they would come into the, to your gym, you'd go, wow, those guys get up and down the court. We, I mean, we just, we can't stop them, you know, and then it, they pull up and hit a shot. They would, they, they'd run, Luke would have them run, you know, after a make or a miss. We just push the tempo, um, which again, when you think back to that era was a little bit, Right, you know, contradictory to a lot no of people. Doubt. Hey, we're going to control this thing. We're going to really run the the offense and do all. That. So, uh, I think it does obviously bring back that feeling that was there that so many people recognize as a high scoring, high octane, high powered offensive team. But like like Coach Olson, I think both these guys, you know, Tommy, Coach Coach Lloyd, they feed off of good, intense, aggressive defense. Mm-hmm. So, Hey, open court turnovers are going to turn into great opportunities for us, you know. Right. And, and so there's a lot of that to it as well, or forcing bad shots that are misses that you can get out and go. So I, I think those are ingredients. And yes, it does certainly um, feel like those those old days. Uh, and, and that's that's fun to reflect back on. That. Right. All right. Let's talk some Jed Fish here. All right. When Jed Fish was hired, and every coach says this, but Jed obviously meant it. He said, recruiting will be the lifeblood of this program right here. Again, every coach says it, but man, Dave, he, he, 
he wasn't kidding. This is a class that I followed recruiting closely. This is a class that we haven't seen around here before. And just talk a little bit about Jed Fish, the guy, what he was able to really, you know, and we've had a lot of the recruits on this show, but just, you know, what he's been able to push for the vision of Arizona football. And when you were, you know, looking at a uh, um, the last football head coach, was what did you see in Jed that indicated that he could be something like that? Well, clearly, I've said this. We've talked about it, Mike. Um, in this day and age, as a head coach, certainly at the most high-profile sports, but I believe in all of our sports, you have to embrace recruiting. You have to be relentless in recruiting. You have to have a staff around you that has that same feeling, that same energy level. Um, you have to do it passionately day after day. I mean, really, while we get into recruiting periods, I, you know, as Jed and I talk about, it's 365. It's every day. You're always thinking about recruiting and what we can do. Uh, but at the same time, you got to be a person that is genuine, real. When you go into the living room, when you talk to high school coaches, when you talk to kids, um, it's genuine and it's real. And people feel that and they can embrace it. Um, and, and that's what Jed does. I think it's you know common with a lot of the coaches that we've recently hired. They love to recruit. They know how important it is. Um, and they and but they come off in a very genuine, real, appropriate way. Um, so that that's part of it. I mean, you just have that passion for it. You know, in the football side, Jed and has done a you know, had a great vision for how to organize. You've got to have a, a structure behind the scenes that can allow you to recruit, evaluate talent, identify prospects, know what you need on your roster, um, you know, plan a vision. Um, a little bit of this isn't, you know, you've got to present the image of the university, what these young people can excel at here, how they can grow, you know, what the football is like, what the life is like, what life after football can be both, you know, maybe professional, but beyond that as well. It's really capturing all of that and just, you know, and it comes all the time, Adam, but you've got to separate why Arizona football is great. But I think fundamentally you get down to relationships. It feels right. good family connect with parents you know i've always said and look at these are young people that come to our campus there's someone's son or daughter grandson granddaughter it's a powerful four or five years uh we've got to do the very best we can and those people who who they send their loved one to us have to feel good about what's going to happen that we're going to care for them and they're going to have a great experience and i think you get that from our coaches and you certainly get it from our football program and now the last piece of that too is you know when you you look at so many of our young men that come into football want to move to the NFL level, want to have an opportunity to go that way. And certainly Jed and the people around him and, and his connections and our coaches know what it takes to get people ready if, they, if they're able to play at the professional level. You mentioned the coaching staff, and generally the best sign of a coaching staff is when other schools come looking for your coaches to be a head coach. And that obviously happened with Don Brown. So I wanted to ask you then, so you bring in, uh, you bring in Johnny Nansen from UCLA. How does that work behind the scenes? Does does the coach does the head coach basically tell the athletic director I'm looking at certain guys and you sign off or how what is that relationship like as far as when it comes to hire like a defensive coordinator perhaps? Yeah, I think uh, again congratulations to Don, you know, opportunity to go back to his part of the country and, and be a head coach. That's always a compliment to have mm -hmm. people come off your staff to be a head coach. But, uh, you know, Jed and I are always in conversations about what's kind of could happen, uh, you know, anticipating the tea leaves a little bit, um, what we need to do to attract new coaches. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I allow our head coaches to manage their programs and to mm -hmm. decide on who they think is the best to bring in. Um, you know, I, I, Jed presents that and says, hey, this is why and where, but I have great faith and confidence in the head coach and feel that that's their responsibility to build a tremendous staff. I want to help provide the resources so we can attract the people he needs to uh, or they need to as a head coach. And, uh, and then we go from there and work it out. And I think bringing in really good people who fit that mantra, again, good coaches on the field, good developers of talent, but also outstanding recruiters. You got to have that mix uh, in our system to elevate this program. How difficult is it when you know that where things are headed and you know how bright the future is and you know arizona obviously on the field not great this past year but certainly not jed's fault how how difficult is it for you though to kind of just say trust me we got this we're looking big picture right here because i people now know what you're you know 
what the big picture goal is, but how difficult is it at the time or is it difficult? Well, I think it's always difficult. Look, we live in a society in a time when, you know, it's very results oriented, very immediate results. There's a lot of attention to the process. Um, people hate that word sometimes process, believe in a process, but you have to stay true to some principles. Um, and, you know, again, we strip the football situation all the way down. Right. Really, but, hey, let's not go halfway. Let's not try to, okay, we'll put a new roof on it. We'll put some new windows on it. Maybe, we're, you know, we went all the way to the bottom and then now we're able to build all the way back up. Now that takes some time. Mm -hmm. you, know, you never build a house quick, as quick as you'd like to. Um, we want to just make sure when we're done, we're in the right place. And that's what process is all about. It, it um, again, some people are patient, more patient than others. Right. Um, every step, there are, there are gains in every step. And that's what you try to evaluate. We may not have had the best results on the field, but while we were going through that, were there results inside of the game, inside of the season that we say, hey, we got better, or right. I can see transition, I can see changes off the field. You know, our recruiting, obviously, yeah. we are attracted. You know, when you go to California, people, and I have my Arizona gear on, people are talking about it all the time, about our football program. Boy, everybody's talking about Arizona football around here in California. Well, that's a good sign to hear. You know, right. And then again, to deliver the kind of class and, and, you know, Jed has actually been on the road. We are well on to next year's class. Right. You know, we've got a couple of little pockets we might uh, finish off this year, but we're really focused on next year already. Right. And, um, so th those are the things. But, again, you want to see growth. And sometimes, yeah, hey, a 12-0 and season would be tremendous growth. Uh, but you have to do that in increments to get there. And I think we're building forward and uh, appreciate our fans' support. Uh, right. Again, I believe – jump on board. This thing's going to be good. Um, I believe in our leadership. I believe in the coaches. I know how I see how excited the players are, those who have been here. Mm -hmm. And then now this new crop of, they're so excited to be on campus and to be in part of the program. There is an energy level like no other. And uh, as I said, when I first got here, I believe football can be great at Arizona. Mm -hmm. We have to, yeah, again, we, we made a transition, you know, it wasn't where we wanted to get to. Um, but I think we've got the right, right setup now to get football going in a really, really positive direction. All right, Dave, as always, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I did want to ask one last, uh, one last question though, for you. Yeah. Um, the, the, the name image and likeness that everybody's talking about in, you know, the college athletics world, how does that, how does that change things for an athletic department? Well, it certainly is a, you know, lots of converging issues around the NCAA landscape, college athletics, but this NIL name image and likeness, uh, is, a, is a tremendous one. It, it certainly changes uh, our focus. It changes the way we do things. I'm very, very pro name image likeness. I think our student athletes ought to have those opportunities to, to generate some revenues like any student could. Um, I will say that uh, because it is somewhat unregulated, uh, there aren't a lot of guardrails around right now. I am concerned about where it's headed from a perspective of, is this really about helping people generate some revenue, some resources for them, help pay their expenses, help grow their brand? Um, or is this trickling into, again, recruitment, inducement, why, you know, these large packages that you hear about, um, I don't always think they're true, but right. you know, the, the effort to recruit more. So I want us to be careful of that, but I know that's a somewhat of a reality. Uh, we're well in the game here. And, uh, you know, student athletes can come to Tucson, they can be part of this program and, and really have an opportunity to generate uh, revenue for themselves, you know, generate business contacts that can help them in the later part of their lives. All those are good things. Um, but it has to, you know, there, there's new nuances to it, new administrative functions um, that we have to be aware of, our, our, our support base out in the community, some of our, our donors, you know, recalibrating where they can help us to make sure that these young student athletes across the board, football, right. players, basketball, all of our student athletes uh, can really benefit in a far greater way from their experience as a college athlete. Dave, you're the man. You've always been great to me. I appreciate you, buddy. Hey, thanks. It's always good to be with you. I appreciate all you do and, uh, and what our great fans do. This is oh. such a great program. Oh, can I get one thing from you? Can I get a back of the A from you? Let's go. Let's back the A, everybody. Appreciate My man. It. All right. You're down. Go Cats and back the A. Yes. Love it. You love it. Love it. Thanks so much, Dave. We'll talk to you again soon, buddy. Appreciate you. Right. Yeah, we'll All talk right. to you soon. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.
All right, Dave Hickey, the absolute man right there. Um, Shane in the back, uh, if you can stamp that at, I think, at 2040 with the back of the A, that remark was absolutely awesome right there. All right, that's what's cool about having – that's what's cool about working here. That's what's cool about being able to have a guy like Dave on here is that, you know, get to go through, get to talk a little bit of sports, get to talk a little bit of, you know, just life, what it's like for the kids on campus right here and 100% awesome. And uh, all right, I see your comment, Rudy Bastillo, so jerk. All right. Okay. Now let's talk real quick about the DraftKings Sportsbook app, code word PHNX. Here's the deal. You throw down $5 on an NFL game this week. You got two games coming up right here. If either one of those teams hit, you get $280 in free plays. That simple, that easy. Make it happen. You know what? You got the, uh, the it's not like the Raiders are in the playoffs or anything. Cardinals certainly aren't, but you know what? You got the Niners, you got the uh, the Rams, and you got this, uh, excuse me, you got the pa or Patriots, just for, uh, Chiefs, and then you got the Bengals. Whoever you think is going to win, if you're a new customer, put down on that. You get $280. And again, eligibility restrictions do apply. 21 and up, Arizona only. If you got a gambling problem, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. They'll get you all taken care of. And if you get that money, you can be something. <laughs> oh, Rudy's funny. You can get uh, something like, uh, uh, like you know, bet against Shane's team in the background right there. Shane's my guy in the back. He's producing everything. He does a great job over on the Sun Devil site. So, you know what? Bet against the Sun Devils. Make yourself a little bit of money. All right. That's what I wanted to hit now a little bit on about what Dave was talking about right there. And Dave's talking about the, the bright future of Arizona football. And that's what's interesting about this entire equation is that this is a guy right here who, you know, obviously Arizona struggled this past season. I don't, you know, we're not going to pull any punches. That's certainly the case. And he had a vision though. And every time I would talk to him, he's like, you know, don't worry. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to get this all right. We're going to get this figured out. And lo and behold, you're bringing in the best recruiting class in school history. And like you said, you might not even be done yet. And you've got a recruiting class also the next year that you're already working on. And I think that's what's fascinating about this is that the recruiting process goes from being this class. But you know what? We also got to work in two other classes to go because if we don't, you know what? We're going to get a late start there. And I think this staff certainly does get this one. So, again, uh, really appreciate Dave coming on. Now, if Rudy, if you're still listening, people like Rudy should get a membership to the PH or to, uh, Go PHNX. Here's the deal. If you get a membership there, you get a free Back the A t-shirt. It doesn't get any better than that. These things are going like hotcakes. They're flying off the shelves. If you're on Twitter, you probably know somebody with a Back the A t-shirt. My guy Shane in the back probably has a back the A t-shirt, probably won't wear it on the Sun Devils. I'm just kidding. I don't want to get you in trouble, Shane, but these things are awesome. But, and that's also why you want to subscribe to the AZ Wildcats podcast, make all of that stuff happen. All right. Tomorrow we're going to be down. We're going to be down at the U of A. Got a lot of stuff. Newcomers report. Jed Fish is going to be meeting with the media, all kinds of different stuff going on right there. And then we got Arizona ASU basketball. I'm going to be hopping on with Shane Diefenbach. I actually want to put him on the screen right now if he wants to come on, but I don't know if he wants to come Hello. on. Shane, my man. <laughs> All right. People out here that don't know who Shane is, Shane's Shane, even though he's an ASU guy, is one of the coolest dudes out there. We're going to be doing a crossover show on uh, Friday. Are you looking forward to that one, Shane? Oh, I'm fired up, man. I'm ready to All go. All fun. right, dude. So tell me a little bit about what to expect from the ASU Sun Devils in this game. Give give us our give our people a little primer. Well, we have a more fun show over on the Sun Devils show. You know, we like to right. let loose a little bit. Um, right. So we're 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 gonna make you we're gonna make you get out of your comfort zone a little bit. I'm, I'm unfortunately we can't do it in studio, or else we'd probably make you eat something heinous or drink like a couple beers. But uh, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna be talking, previewing the game. Uh, Maybe a little bit of an optimistic viewpoint from myself, probably a pessimistic viewpoint from the other two on the show, but that should be fun. All right, absolutely. And as we talked about DraftKings Sportsbook app, code word PHNX, throw down $5 on a game, and guess what? If that team hits, you get $280 in free plays. That's simple, that easy. Who do you like this week, Shane? 
I just you just can't bet against Mahomes, man. I just can't do it. I, the, the The Bengals had a had a generational performance when they beat them in Cincinnati, and it was only by one score. Uh, mm. I, I think the Chiefs just roll this weekend. All right, so you know what? If it's good enough for Shane, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for all of you people. Uh, should be good enough for everyone out there. <laughs> now, quick reminder again: we'll be doing the crossover show tomorrow. Shane, you still got to get me the time on that yeah. one, but we'll do. And we'll be down at the U of A at uh, four o'clock, looking at a recruiting class that you know, uh, air that ASU's had in recent years. That Arizona is now back in the A and bringing in that recruiting class. And again, one thing to remember: if you can get your COVID vaccine. It's uh, it's now free. Uh, everybody five and up is eligible for it. And here's the deal. You know, it's a good way to keep you out of the hospital. It's a good way to be able to, you know, keep your family safe. So if you can get the COVID-19 vaccine, everybody, you know, somebody that's been affected by it. Go ahead and get that one. You can hop on the website right there at uh, let's see. Oh, shoot, just all right. You can hop on the website right there. This is bad um, at. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. AZHealth.gov. Find vaccine for a location near you. They got them up in Phoenix. They got them here in Tucson. But I wanted to bring Shane on real quick just because really appreciate you, dude. Really appreciate Jacob and Leah because, quite frankly, if anybody knows me technologically, I'm stupid. And uh, I would not be able to do this without the guys behind the scenes. So, Shane, you're on the scene, but you're also behind the scenes. So, again, appreciate you, my man. Of course. All right. For uh, Dave Hickey, Shane Diefenbach, I am merely Mike Luke. We will be back with you tomorrow. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast.